see. Students of the week. Oh, one of my favorites. Um, Cam Camden Dempsey. Loving sophomore long snapper. He's going to be the darn governor of this state one day. He's unbelievable. I don't know how to pronounce Jordan's last name. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. That's good. For business, I'm sorry, uh, Camden with business, finance, and marketing. It's unbelievable. Honor Shador, named to Dave O'Brien class of 2023. Official candidate, Travis Hunter, honorable mention for the lot. Trophy, Nepal Hornick, award player of the week. Uh, Travis is officially named a semifinalist of the Thorpe Trophy, which I think we already have two of them here. TV ratings, Colorado, third most watched game. CU now has had over almost 60, almost 51 million viewers this season. Set out streak. Previous CU remains. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me address this. You know, our kids got robbed during the game last week. I think that's a travesty. And we, I would expect the NCAA to do something about that. Um, these are college kids. Um, I'm pretty sure they don't think about insurance at this point in this juncture in their life. We've we've talked about NILs and how to really maintain their finances. We've pretty much uh, given them financial planners and, and, and given them the resources for that. But the insurance part of it, we slipped. And we didn't uh, really educate them on that. So I wish, uh, I know the kids would be forthright in what was stolen in some of our just uh, staff members as well. And now all that stuff should be replaced. This is the Rose Bowl. They said the granddaddy of them all, right? I'm sure granddaddy has some money. Grandpa should have some money to get these kids. Um, I'm gonna have a list made out from these young men and I know they're gonna be truthful about what they lost so we could try to get that back for them. They may not be able to get the items back but we should uh, be able to reimburse them. That was unbelievable. But I did hear that uh, the home team was robbed as well. So I, I, don't, I don't know, but I did hear that. But that don't make no sense when you're out there balling and, and playing your heart out and you're getting robbed in the same aspect. So I hope we could do something about that NCA. You do something about everything else. Do something about that when it, when it comes to kids in regards to the kids, NCAA, you do something about everything else. Do something about this one. Okay, let's get down. Yes, sir. Hi, Coach Adam Monster Tiger, 24-7 Sports. Yes, sir. How, how is Shadour doing physically? Oh, he's good. He's good. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to give him uh, another day or so off so he could heal properly and so he could be his best, his best. We want his best. And uh, he's doing well, though. Mentally, physically, as well as psychologically. Hey, Coach McMiller, Fox 31. Building on that question, as the roster is constructed now, how do you devise a scheme to be able to protect Shador and also allow him to have his skill set be at the forefront? We could do it. I believe in the staff that we have on hand. I believe in the staff that, that they can do it. And I have the utmost uh, of faith in them. Also, I had a private personal meeting with the whole offensive line, and the meeting was phenomenal. I have uh, the utmost thought process that those guys are going to step it up tremendously, and you're going to see a more cohesive, more aggressive, more physical, more prepared group than ever before this weekend. I really do believe that. Give me Sir Foss, 24-7 Sports. When, on the recruiting side of things, when there's a loss like that, when there's an obvious glaring issue, <laughs> Do you see that as a deterrent for recruits? or just an <laughs> Are you kidding me? As a deterrent? No, not whatsoever. That's a, uh, I'm not going to say it's a blessing, but our, our, our phone rings wonderfully. And uh, they know we ain't hard to find in certain areas. So when you see something, first of all, when you're on television, as much as we've television recruits want that exposure that's the first and foremost thing for recruits and being able to be developed and understand uh, what's at stake understand you the type of quarterback that you have on hand as well as receivers and running backs and you just need that one component and these guys first of all they're going to step it up you're going to see that 
But secondly, yeah, you, you got some guys that you, – you, you'll see the commits come in. You'll see them. Hi, Coach. Mikhail Herbst, you independent. Um, all season long, you've inspired everyone with I Believe. Yes. And we are coming off with two tough losses. Mm -hmm. How do you continue to inspire the team to go out and win the last three games? First of all, I believe in everyone that's inside uh, this locker room and on this staff. And this is the way I look at it. It's been one game that we've truly got our butts kicked. I mean, kicked. There was no winning in that. When we got off the bus, and during that, I think it was 40 points on the scoreboard when we looked up there. So Oregon did their thing. Every other game we've been in, we've had a chance to win those games. It was seven to six at halftime, you know, and we come up and give up something. So now, now I think it's 14 six. We're still in the game. You still have an opportunity. That's promising for not only the kids that play for us, the coaching staff, the fan base. It's promising because we had an opportunity to win those games. We just got to learn how to win. And uh, we're going to be okay. So we love the direction that we're headed. It could be tremendously the other way. But when you have an opportunity to beat ranked teams, that's tremendous for us. We just got to do it. Hey, Coach, a uh, little lighthearted twist for you. Uh, just a little over a year ago, we mm -hmm. lost Mike Leach. Yeah. Uh, and he had a real viral moment few years before that where he was asked to rank his top five Halloween candies. So did you rank your kids? I don't. I'm you have any a, thoughts on that? I'm not a candy guy. <laughs> I don't I don't eat much candy whatsoever. I'm yeah, not a, no I'm thoughts not a, at all? No, I'm not a candy guy. If I had to rank my number one candy, it would be now laters. You, some of you might have to t ask what that is. <laughs> all the black folks, can you tell the white folks oh, what that is? <laughs> It's good. It's good. I order you some. I go on Amazon and get you some. But a pack of nine ladies is uh is everything to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're gonna break your teeth on those now and yeah, later. So you know what time it is, huh? Yeah, you know I know what time it is. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Ariel or Sudo Nine News. Um, you know, these eight PM games, I know you've been pretty vocal about not yeah. enjoying them. Um, but your team has also kind of come out to some either slowish sluggish starts or has like lost some energy from them. How do you get the team to like how what do you do for these eight PM games? How do you get them prepared? How do you get them to keep the energy up for them? Uh, we we have different ways to, to to keep their energy up and the guys that love this game, you have no problem with their energy being up. It's the guys that don't love the game. We just have we gotta minimize that in 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 Make sure we're putting the guys out there that love to play. So uh, it's not hard for these guys to get situated and desire to play these games because, first and foremost, many of their family members are here and they want to put on a show for their family members and the girlfriends or loved ones, and they just want to – and they want to shot at the next level. And they know the, not only the a multitude of people in this country is watching, but scouts are watching as well. So I think it's on them to get themselves up, but we, we know how to motivate them tremendously. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jack Carlo with the Buffalo's Wire. Um, saw Caleb Mathis on Saturday get his first. Yes. You know, most action he's had all year. Just yeah. What did he do to deserve that? Um, he runs routes at the right depth. He turns around and catches the ball consistently. Consistently. Every day in practice he does it. Uh, <laughs> anytime you put him out there, he does what's right. He don't have many busts whatsoever, meaning uh, running the wrong routes, running the wrong plays, running the wrong depth. And uh, Shador has a chemistry with him as well. So that's what he did to earn it. He's a consistent football player, and we love it. Hey, Coach, Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Yes, loved sir. now and laters as a kid. Um, <laughs> wanted to ask about Alton McCaskill. Yeah. Uh, I, I know he's healthy. He's been back in there. Yeah. But w with an injury like that, is he still maybe searching for that, that, that extra gear or maybe the confidence he played mm -hmm. with at, at Houston a couple years ago? Um, Alton, I don't want to know if he want me to disclose what transpired. You know I'm always honest with you guys and straight up. I don't lie to you guys or false about anything. Alton came in my office yesterday, and he wanted to be redshirted. Um, which I think is very wise, which I, I'm, I'm all for him. If he would have wanted to play, continue to play, I'd have been all for him. He's one of my favorite human beings on this team. He's a great young man, was raised properly, and he wants it. But he does understand that he – it's been a while um, since he 
has had his 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 full strength and full potential and, and and ability to move and cut and explosion, and he understands that. So he wants to train and, and work his butt off and get into shape and come back in the spring and, and earn that number one spot. That That's what he echoed to me, and I love it. I saw him today on the scout team going 100 miles an hour, trying to get the guys to look and just being the player that he is. He's a great team guy. He's a great human being. He's a, he's a great young man. So that's where he is right now. Hey, Coach. Nick Rothschild, Denver 7. How you doing, sir? I'm great. Um, just to clarify, did you have anything stolen from you at the Rose Bowl? No. they, they uh, Oh, God, that was a good one that I just had. I'm thinking ahead. <laughs> no, I didn't. I've been gotten enough. Okay. Um, so then my question for you is, after reflecting <laughs> on the that game. That was good, wasn't it? That was good. Lord, help me. I'm so stupid. Lord, help me, please. I'm sorry. Excuse me? <laughs> That's all right. Um, probably better than my question I'm about to ask you. But anyway, um, after reflecting on the game, the defense <laughs> and the way that they fought, are you happy with their effort at least? Yeah. And are they yeah. moving in no, the right I'm happy direction? with everything they, they, they did. Shoot, what we had, three, four turnovers in the first half? That, we got we to gotta cash those in. We, we got to score. I mean, it's a whole different game. Um, and you come out the second half, I mean, we blew, we blew a couple of things, and, and uh, it didn't and it go like we expected on that half. But I like what they did, and I like the effort that we gave. I, I truly do. We're building. We're getting better and better, and I like that. I like that. Hey, Coach. Uh, Pat Graham, Associated Press. Um, you planned for everything, and one thing you couldn't plan for was was the theft like that. But so, what kind of safeguards do you put in place to make sure that that like this happens again for your team? Well, like what? Well, I don't I don't understand. Like I just make sure like uh, no no kind of theft. I mean. Oh, we don't get robbed. Yeah. I oh, mean, we 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 leave our own security. We don't depend on someone else's security. We leave our own security in the locker rooms and make sure we're straight by our own means. But you, you got to understand, that was on the road. You're not thinking like that. You're not even thinking like that at home. So that was t – and you're in the Rose Bowl, man. Like, who robs the Rose Bowl? <laughs> who who robs the Rose Bowl? Somebody. So uh, – but the kids, a lot of the things were emotional th things that were giving to them, like chains and necklaces and gifts. And you got some idiots online saying, well, they shouldn't have that. So they shouldn't be blessed. They shouldn't be blessed. That's, that's crazy. It's like if you have a car in your driveway and somebody come and steal your car. Well, you shouldn't have a car. That's how stupid that sounds. Yeah. These are young men uh, that worked their butts off or they were blessed and gifted by their family members to give them whatever what was stolen. I know someone had a significant amount of cash, uh, one of our camera guys, and uh, that's we pray to God that he gets that replaced. Bad. It's not good, though. Hey, guys, Jason Jones, Bus Beat. Um, I'm pretty sure you would say that you're moving on to Oregon State, uh, but just since you mentioned it in the post game, has the NCAA or the Pac-12 communicated anything to you not one to way me. or the other about Shiloh's hit? Oh, Shiloh's hit. No, not to me. I'm pretty sure they might have reached out to, to Rick or, or somebody. I, I, not whatsoever. What are you going to do? Say I'm sorry? My bad? Right, that's the word that every coach in America hates. My bad. We don't want to hear that. What are you going to do about it? It's over now. No, nah, we don't want to hear nothing about it. We don't, it is what it is. Move on. Hey, Coach, there's the old adage about 20-60-20. You know, you the top 20% of your team is the leaders, the middle 60. kind of. I never heard that one. No? 20-60-20. So it's like the top 20 is leaders, the middle 60 can yeah. kind of be pulled either way, the bottom 20 pulls down. Yeah. I'm curious if you feel like your top 20 – is strong enough to keep that middle group engaged for the Final Four? I don't think that middle group is is a negative group. Every Everyone has knuckleheads. Some of your kids are knuckleheads. You know, a couple of mine I got to keep it out. So just understanding life in, it, in itself, I wouldn't go with those percentages, but we definitely have some that are bona fide leaders and they want this with everything they have. You have some just meandering uh, around and you got some that you know probably don't want to be where they are because they think they deserve more playing time or or more of something that they're not getting that's just that's just life that's an office job that's a reporting job that's that's anybody in life but we haven't lost our passioning and 
or intensity for our purpose, and that's to win. Um, we're still on the same page with that, coaches included. Um, everybody inside the locker room and that's a part of this organization, we definitely, the desire and the goal is to win, and it's to win out. Good question, though. Matt Smith, 104.3, the fan. You faced a lot of great receivers in your yeah. time, you know, yeah. college pros. Do you have an NFL comp for Xavier Weaver? It's a good question. To me, Xavier Weaver got a lot of Andre Rising in him. He's tough, he's gritty, he's nasty. He can get vertical, he can run routes, he's going to catch the ball. He can return kicks. He practices his butt off. Um, and really not a complainer. Now, Drake wanted that ball. <laughs> you know, every day that ends with a Y. But Xavier, uh, he's a good kid, man. I, that's my biggest comparison. I, I'm sorry going old school on you, but that's a guy that I played with and I practiced with that, that was a phenomenal player. Probably should be a Hall of Famer, especially since they letting everybody else in free. Might as well go ahead and throw Dre in there. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about Travis. Mm -hmm. That play was sensational on the first Which one? intercept. The first interception okay. Was, okay. was sensational. It seems to me there's not a lot of even NFL dudes that can do some of the stuff that he's well, doing. That's, that's right instinctive. Now. That's instinctive and athletic. That's why you don't worry about it. You don't right. worry about the snaps. You don't worry about the plays. You you don't. The, the, the game that Travis had that wasn't his best game on the defensive side of the ball because he played well on the offensive side of the ball that game. He just wasn't focused on defense. He was more focused on his job on offense. So that's it. He stayed over the break and refocused. Do people understand how good he really is yet? No, because he plays for us. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we got some people that don't like nothing we do, but they will. They understand. They will understand. We got several players that are really, really good. Really good. Coach Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. You know, you didn't like the call. A lot of others didn't either on Shiloh. Right. Do you? There's as a, a couple calls out there. Like there are a couple. You want just the Shiloh one? As a dad and a father, do you worry about league officials getting a rep on him, getting a rep with them, and no. then looking out for him? You know. No, no, no. These guys are really good, man. I think we have the best officials in the country. When I say football officials, I, I really do. And their game is tough. Their their, their job is tough, man. So, you know, sometimes they, they miss it. Sometimes um, it's interpretation of why. And that was just interpretation. We felt like it was clean, of course, because he's our guy. If I was on an opposing team, I might have felt indifferent. Um, just like the guy with the one-hand catch on our sideline. I, I yelled at him. I said, son, great catch. It really was a great catch. I thought he was out by far, but it was a great catch, man, a great catch, one of the best grabs I've seen. So, you know. I think the officials really do a great job, wholeheartedly. Hey, Coach, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. I mean, this second straight week you're playing a, a run-heavy team, a yeah. very physical team on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Um, does that change how you go about practice at all when you're preparing for a really physical yes, team on does. both sides of the ball? Yes, it does. You incorporate more tackling drills in um, to compensate for the physicality. You, you pad them up maybe a little more, maybe allow a lot more contact um, because of the physicality. You, you you may elongate some periods that involves physicality in it that you want to make sure your team is, is ready and on point, but you still want to tailor off on those tail off on those things to kind of keep them fresh as well. So um, these guys are watching film. They've increased the film uh, viewership tremendously since we challenged them to, so they know what they're in for. And I, 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 I can't wait, especially since looking all the linemen in the eyes and just seeing uh, how they responded in the candid conversation that we had, it's, it's tremendous. I can't wait to see how they respond. We good? God bless you. I appreciate you. Excuse me? No, I didn't. He was me? So should I be him? Well, now and later. You, now and later. Now and later. You can't say now or later. Now ladies. You messing up the hood part of this, man. It's called nine ladies. Pack of nine ladies.